Thanks for staying with us. Uh, we now take our first hot topic, and that is the fact that America has decided. The election results, we know that it's in favor of the Republican candidate, and uh, now President-elect Donald Trump. Trump has made a stunning comeback in the 2024 U.S. presidential election, securing a victory that has taken many by surprise. The former president triumphed despite facing significant challenges and a highly competitive race. Trump's success marks a significant moment in American politics as he defied predictions and overcame considerable oppositions to reclaim the presidency. This victory is a testament to his continued influence in the Republican Party and his ability to mobilize a large segment of the American electorate. As he prepares for a second term, the results of his election are set to reshape the country's future direction. Well, uh, this morning we have two guests that will be talking with us on uh, the outcome of the presidential election in America. We have a former Obamuno uh, news manager, Nigeria Info, Wazobia, Cool FM. Good morning and welcome to the program. Hello, good morning to you. Uh, it's good to be here. We also have Dr. Martin Morgan, a public affairs analyst. Good morning, doctor, and welcome to the program. Uh, good morning, all. Okay. Nice being together. Yeah. Let me just begin with what you feel about the outcome of the presidential election results in the U.S. We've talked. We've seen how uh, the campaigns were and how the two candidates navigated. You know, at the dying minute, Kamala Harris came up and he, she pulled a very great crowd with a lot of celebrities being on her side and all that. We also saw Trump on the other hand, who well, is the only convicted <laughs> uh, former U.S. president, but he has made a comeback, uh, and um, that's why they're saying a lot of people are surprised. But let me hear your take on the uh, elections conducted and the results that we have seen right now. Let me begin with you, former. Well, um, to a large extent, I'm not sure that um, some of us were surprised. Um, I think I heard you use the word surprise. I'm not sure the result uh, you know, was, surpri was surprising um, because even before Kamala Harris um, got into the, um, the, the mix, uh, Trump was already leading um, in the polls um, because President Biden, um, unfortunately, uh, age is not on his side. Um, some of his economic decisions haven't really gone down well um, with a lot of Americans. Inflation is high, or was high at the time. It's come, it's come down um, to, to, to um, the, the barest min minimum right now. Uh, but prices of things, you know, prices of groceries are still high. Uh, and to a large extent, maybe we'll talk about that later, because it was one of the most, it, it, it was the biggest reason uh, Donald Trump um, secured this victory. You know, so th that momentum was already there for Trump, irrespective of his um, cantacarious um, uh, nature or, or the way he talks, you know, sometimes. He already had that lead. And then the president had that disastrous outing in the first debate, which, of course, led to so many Democrats calling on him to resign, which he eventually did and then handed the baton over to his vice president. But there was a, there, there was a lot that the VP needed to do to catch up. You, you know, um, between June and November, you could argue Trump had been preparing for this comeback for four years, since the very first day uh, he left office in January of 2021. Um, he has been preparing to come back to office. Kamala just got into the mix in June. Um, you know, so I, I'm not sure it was that surprising. Maybe the margin of victory probably surprising in some states and in some areas. But uh, if, if you followed the trend, um, it, it was as much as, you know, pundits and polls show that uh, it was close neck and neck. You could argue that, you know, Trump had that advantage uh, coming into November 5th. Okay. Uh, Dr. Morgan, your, your take, please. Yeah, uh, I think uh, like what uh, my brother former have said, he has really given the optics that give to what uh, we have today as a uh, Trump, Trump 2.0. I think that is a return back, that is a look at it. But all said and done, I think the Republican made some uh, 
uh, strategic mistakes in terms of how they have been, uh, sorry, the Democrats, sorry, made some strategic mistake because this is the second time they are feeding a woman and, and they never got it through. So that tells you that, yes, like he said, Biden, Biden was just a, what do I call it, a, a sort of a disappointment in court to what led to the ascending of uh, Mr. Trump at this time around, like he said. If you see the election proper, like, uh, we say Trump used four years, uh, Harris used six months, six to five months to prepare. She just jumped in. Mentally, she was not very keen to understanding what Trump was, but you were all um, uh, riding on the back of Trump having 91 uh, court cases and two assassination attempts that that would have been the sensibilities that were riding. But no, it goes that beyond that because the America wanted to reclaim their position and status as a world leader, and therefore they needed somebody, irrespective of the negativity about Mr. Trump threat, but they needed a personality who can command the respect for the people and bring back America to where she used to be. I think this is what uh, the, the Republican catched on and they, they took up the Democrat away from <laughs> uh, taking him to the justice. So you cannot see that, just like what the former said, that is the optic. But at the same time, for me, beyond the elections, and we talk about the economy, are we sure that the economy is going to prove? Yeah, but Trump is a transactional guy. Is there a, a transaction? a bilateral guy is not a, a very typical global player he's a protectionist he will now try to see how he can now revamp the american economy and get it to that point he is talking even about the immigration we are talking about because he says he's going to send those criminal in court away back to where they are coming from uh, but he refused to understand that trump himself his grandparents were immigrants whose father Friedrich ran away from uh, germany in 1885 to come and stay there and join the kkk and he, he refused to understand that also, but then all said and done, it's, it's gone now. But Trump, Mr. Trump, you are going to see 2.0 is going to be another Trump different from what you saw in the previous journey. Mm -hmm. I think the, the Democrats shot themselves in the less strategically. Okay, so speaking about um, what America is going to be now, Ufoma, how do you think things are going to play out with Trump 2.0? I know that when he first assumed office, um, earlier on in the first term, he, he had a slogan which was MAGA, make America great. He again. still has it. And he still has that same slogan. Yes. So, of yes. course, there is the whole, um, you know, mandate to do something different for America, one of which is the immigration policies, because, of course, now there are going to be more visa bans. And I'm sure a lot of Nigerians are even worried about that, that what happens when Trump is president and how are we going to get our visas or my, or, you know, just move over there. Um, obviously he's talking about the, econ the economy and we know, um, uh, president elect now Trump is a very, is a businessman. In fact, that was how he started. He had a show called the apprentice. So we know that when it comes into the business world, he probably can shape up America. But what do you think? There are certain things that we would expect to see now with, Trump 2.0? Um, we're not going to see anything slightly different from what we saw um, in Trump 1.0. I slightly disagree with my, you know, my colleague, uh, mm. you know, who said who might see it. No, you're going to see exactly the same thing you saw in his first tenure. Um, because that's what he rolled on, you know, to also um, come back mm. uh, in this particular time. He is going to be tough on immigration, um, which is why sometimes I chuckle, you know, when I see quite a number of Nigerians or Africans who say they are um, Trumpists, um, you know, so to speak. Because at the end of the day, if, you're, if your plan is to migrate to the U.S., um, it's going to be a lot tougher for you. That's the honest truth. Because that's what Trump stands for. Now, he has been accused of um, ensuring that... Now, let's, let's get one thing straight. The Democrats themselves, like we say in local palace, they don't try. Um, they waited for about two years into Biden's administration you know, to start even dealing with the issue of, um, of um, immigration. Now, but at the end of the day, there was a bill that was put together by the very core of Republicans and Democrats together. Now, that bill, if that bill had been passed in Congress, 
and signed by President Biden, to a large extent, he would have solved maybe not all of the immigration issues, but he would have helped some of the immigration issues or most of the immigration issues. However, Trump himself, who supposedly is tough on immigration, was the one allegedly who maybe, but I would say allegedly because he hasn't denied it. Those accusations have been made and he has not denied it. He called some of the, the, the Republican congressmen and women who are loyal to him and they ensured that that bill did not see the light of the day. You know why? Politics. Because for as long as the immigration issues lasted and it lasted up until today, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, um, Trump would have a, a great opportunity to actually win the election, which is what has now happened two days ago. So back to the, the, the policies or, or what we're going to see in this second term. You're going to see tough stands on immigration. You most likely see tough stands on, on foreign policy. He has threatened to leave NATO, even though you could argue he did that because he wants European nations to spend more money in their defense, at least 2% of their GDP, which you would argue some of those European Union um, nations are doing. Um, there's a more likelihood that uh, Netanyahu and the fight in, in, in the Middle East will continue. Again, I chuckle and I laugh. You know, one of the things that helped Trump win this election, a small um, but very important key, is the, the fact that we were able to get some Arab votes in some of the swing states, Wisconsin, Michigan, you know, Pennsylvania. Now, these votes, these, these Arabs, you know, who voted for him, we're not happy with the way the Biden administration has handled the whole Israel, Gaza, Israel, Lebanon, and all the middle crisis issues, which is, which is understandable. But the funny part of it, or the irony of it all, is that Trump is more of a friend, at least he showed us, he showed us that in his first um, tenure, that he's more of Israel's friends, um, he's more friends with Israel, I should say, than um, the Democrats. I looked through the last three presidents who have been Democrats over the last 30 years, Bill Clinton, Barack Obama, and now Joe Biden, they have slightly been tougher on Israel than Trump was in his first four years. He was the one who moved the capital to Jerusalem against, you know, um, all expectations. So you're going to see um, tougher stands on immigration, maybe less of America involved in world politics, because like his slogan goes, uh, MAGA, make America great again. Mm -hmm. We're going to see more tariffs, you know, on, on goods coming into the U.S. Um, and, of course, you will definitely see a lot more attack on um, traditional media because as far as he is concerned, we all are fake news, never mind whether it is true or not. Mm -hmm. well, the, Dr. Morgan, there's, a, there's a, an issue that... <laughs> Uh, may sound laughable when you're talking about America because they sh should be very developed uh, than us democratically and in respect to gender and all that. But do you think this election also shows you that maybe America is not ready for a, a female president? Mm -hmm. It happened in, eventually, Hillary Trump Clinton. Trump stood against Hillary Clinton and, yeah. and took it, and a lot of people felt that that was because of gender. And then now, again... Uh, uh, Kamala Harris, who had almost everything going for her, even though she came into the race late because she had everybody following her, and it's not about just uh, Kamala Harris, but the, the party. But some people are still saying maybe America, with all the talk about gender equality, is still not ready for a female president. I think uh, there are no two ways. But if you, if you listen to my first salvo, I said the, the Republican made some strategic mistake. The second time they are presenting women, contest and they are failing to the same guy and that tells you that this the american society are not ready for a woman to become a leader despite their democratic principles and equal rights uh whatever they are, they are preaching you know what it is become a situation where i do what i say but not what i do but then if you look at, uh, at that election proper we expected that certain policy the sensibilities of the women should have been able to be behind uh, kamala but she was unable to get it because of certain things she brought the LGBTQ and the rest that like she was going to bring it in. But Trump was able to stand and say, no, we have to stand like a man. And that tells you that the society needs a man. And that's why I said uh, they, need, they needed somebody who can now stand tall and say, 
uh, this is the this is the real person we wanted and come back at the sheriff or the ward well i what uh mr uh, former said that the, the last time you see that trump will not be a little bit uh, different my own word of using different euphemism is the fact that the collaborate the collaborative nature of trump in terms of politics i use the word protectionist and why you got protectionist like he outlined the tariffs and the rest. this is the type of trump you are going to see so for the american society they don't need that feminine thing coming to laugh and dance with around people no what they needed they needed a tough guy at this point because biden is so fragile as at that moment we saw that the american economy and even the policy went down goes went down so they need somebody to bring back that they make america great again like what they said and that is the same slogan he's using so in terms of the whole situation then a woman, a female candidate, will not be able to have the guts to do that. So they needed a male person in terms of Trump. Despite the baggages he's having, he's keep the baggages aside, take the personality, and let's get the polity working and the sanity. I think that is what happened. That's the way I, I, I look at the situation we are, we are seeing about uh, what emerged from Trump. Hmm. Okay, well, Sorry, if I could, if I could um, add to that issue, um, I, I think that, you, you know, I asked this question on the WhatsApp group I'm, I'm on a couple of months ago, um, and I've, I've also asked this question a few times to my colleagues. Um, America is not ready for a female president. That is the honest truth. Um, mm -hmm. The American society is still um, uh, largely, you could argue, um, Man, man centric, you know, if there's a word like that. Um, I don't want to say show the male chauvinism. Yeah, you know, mis misogyny is still a big issue. Even the candidate himself, the president elect, you know, you see the way he talks to women, you yes. see the way he treats women, you know, you, could, you can see misogyny all around him from day one. It's never been a problem for him. There are a number of Americans who also feel that way. However, however, I think we would also be doing a disservice to the American people if we reduce um, Kamala Harris's um, election defeat to just about America not being ready for a woman president. Exit polls have showed us that the number one issue the American public voted on was the economy. The 67% of, or almost 70% of Americans who voted for this election said their priority was, a, was that the election was either poor or very bad. If 70 out of every 100 Americans believe that the economy inflation is bad, and out of those 70 people, another 60, 67 to 70% of them voted for Donald Trump. I'm trying to do some little maths here. That's about 55 people. If 55 out of 100 people believe that the Biden administration did not do particularly great in economy, irrespective of some of the very good things he actually did, if we're being honest. But inflation um, has reduced the purchasing power of the average American. I had a friend who traveled to the U.S. recently. Like, literally, she was struggling to buy things. You know, she couldn't buy things because the prices of things had gone up. You could not go to the, the, the grocery store to buy your eggs because they were more expensive. You know, things had gone up. So for the average American, 55 out of every 100 person was voting based on the fact that their purchasing power had gone down. And so these people, if 55 out of every 100 voters was voting for Donald Trump, it automatically meant that, you know, um, he was going to win the election. And that's exactly what happened. Look, at, there's also another very important um, uh, point to note. For the first time in God knows how long, the Latino voters moved away from Democrats yes. to a large extent. 60, about two thirds of all Latino votes, especially in the swing states, usually they vote for Democrats, that minority group. But 67 to 70% of them in this election cycle voted for Donald Trump. He also boiled back to the economic issues because it affected um, themselves. And then Trump also gained some inroads in black male voters. Not, a, not very significant, but significant enough to get the 1,000 here, 500 here, which of course added up. Now, if you go back to 2022, the midterms, 
one of the big issues in the midterms was abortion rights. You know, yeah. and to a large extent, that was why Republicans didn't get the blowout that many of us expected expected them to get two years ago. However, in this election cycle, abortion rights was not as big. It was big, big yes, but it was not the major issue. If you look, even women, women who you thought ideally would have voted for Kamala Harris, right women who voted for Trump in 2016, voted for Biden in 2020, they went back to vote for um, Trump in, in this election. So, yes, America might not be, or at least have shown us in two election cycles that they're not ready for a woman president. But it went beyond that. It was not just about that. It was about the economic issue and the fact that many people's purchasing power had gone down. If 40% of the electorate voted on economic issues, there's absolutely no way the Democrats would have won. Mm. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think uh, so I have to, to add up to what you said, because we can now see that the middle class is gradually getting a lot of uh, dropping and because of the economic purchasing, the economy and purchasing power. Like in rightly summarized years, I think this election gave Trump being a businessman on the economy issues. And this is what happened because of the realities on the ground with them. Okay, so quickly, um, Dr. Morgan, I, because a lot of people on social media, you know, keep saying, oh, why are Nigerians so interested in this? Why? I mean, that's American politics. We need to be more interested in Nigerian politics. But how do you think that this would definitely affect, you know, our diplomatic relations with Nigeria? It's like, so other countries, obviously, we need to do business with them. We need to also be involved because we're all in this world together. But for people who are saying we shouldn't be so involved in American politics, how do you think um, they need to be reoriented to know that with our diplomatic relations, we just need to um, put our ears to the ground for that? No, sure. I think uh, all said and done, I agreed. From 2.0, for me, like I said yesterday in another forum, I said that the Nigeria or Africa may not be too will not be very significant into the mantra of uh, Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. But getting us involved, because it's a global village, we need to understand, we have a very strong population of Nigerians there, and we yeah. try to see how our export... In fact, we are going to even have a lot of challenges some of these policies. There's something we call AGOA. And I, I am very certain that uh, even Trump, you know, like I say, is not going to be a team player as related. So we have to get involved, because our trade... We need to understand where we are going. We need to understand what happened. But Trump is not a person that we can define. It's not definable. It's that type of person that is brute, rash in certain decisions that he may not be follow laid up protocols. So getting involved for us because it's a global village, we need to also know where our businesses are going or what do we intend to do. Apart from the uh, economic time, we also have some military ties with them. We have other relationship with Americans and the rest because they are training our soldiers and we are buying some of the equipment from them. We need to really understand how we are going. Is it going to be all transactional? That is the question we keep on asking. So that is why we pick a lot of interest in American elections too. Just like the way the French uh, Francophones will pick interest in the French elections. So that is just the way we are trying to look at that because the world is a global village. Okay. We should be concerned about what is happening. Okay, so very, very uh, briefly now, Oforma, let me come to you. What are the lessons that we should take as a country from what happened in America? Even though their democracy is what we say we copied, it seems as if there are some things we're not getting right. So what are these lessons we need to take as a country? Very briefly, please. Um, we, are, we are not going to take any lessons. We, we, get, we keep asking ourselves this question. Nobody is going to take any lesson from anywhere. Let's, let's say the truth and say it very well. Um, the political class is not ready to take any lesson. Um, the electoral body themselves are not ready to take any lesson because if they were, we probably would not have some of the shenanigans we had in the 2023 election. So it's all talk. Oh, what did you learn from it? Nothing. We absolutely will learn nothing. Mm -hmm. Nigerian politicians will do what they want to do. Um, the electoral body will do what they want to do. And in 2028, we'll come back again to this whole Oh, what did we learn from it? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. That's just the honest truth. Well, we learned that we learned nothing. So <laughs> it's, still, it's still a lesson that we have learned. Uh, well, and, and at least we know that if it is a democracy we copied, uh, there are things that could be done better than what we're doing here. It's still a lesson that we've learned. Our institutions are not strong. Yeah, well, we are the ones that are making the institutions not be, not be strong. We have to learn. Okay, Dr. Bobby and I, former, I'd like to thank you, gentlemen, for coming on the show this morning. It's been a pleasure uh, having you discuss this matter with us thank you so much thank you gentlemen thank you for thank you for having me yeah thank you all right have a wonderful day
So okay. That's your we'll just take a breather now and return with uh, the, the Ministry of Education reversing uh, their talk about uh, scrapping a scrapping 18-year um, uh, bar for uh, the uh, admission into tertiary institutions. Stay with us.